Remember, acrylics dry through evaporation. We need to keep them moist. It's the biggest complaint people have about acrylic. Well, we've learned how to take care of that problem. So you take paper towels. All you do is take a paper towel, and of course you're going to need a roll of paper towels handy at all times, so keep those available as well. You take a paper towel and use the larger piece, not a small one, but get the big size. You fold it in half, fold it in fourths, and you have a strip like this. See that strip? you lay it down around the outer edge of your palette. So you can see the paper here, all, okay. It goes on the outer edge like this, you lay it down. Then you take a mister bottle, which is another tool everyone needs. You can buy these mister bottles anywhere, Walmart or any store, and you just mist the paper towel and you get it nice and moist. No, not just damp, but it's very moist. In fact, it needs to be saturated all the way through, okay. Now you don't want it dripping wet, but you can tell by feeling both sides how wet that is. Just make sure you get a strip of those all the way around. You can double the layer if you want a little more thickness. That's up to you. That's one trick we use. Then we put your paints on top of those wet paper towels, and that's what keeps them moist. And then when you put the lid on there, voila, they'll last for many, many days, folks. So you don't need to worry about wasting paint when you work with acrylic. I know some of you have heard horror stories about that. Well, this solves that problem. I recommend that every one of you have a piece of sandpaper handy. And I want to make sure that there's no misunderstanding about this either. You say, sandpaper? What are we going to do with sandpaper? Folks, sometimes you'll buy a canvas like this, and it will have a tooth on it that's a little bit too heavy or too rough or there might be a little flaw, a little, you know, hair, uh, one of the weaves that's not right. Or if, say you want your canvas to be a little smoother. Well, this is gesso. This white stuff is, is a, an acrylic prime surface. It's, it's, a, it's a gesso, which we've talked about in our setup snippet, but it's this substance right here. See, it's called gesso. And it's a very thick, opaque, pasty paint that you use to seal th the canvases with. Well, once you get by your canvas, and it's like this, if it's too rough, just take a sort of a medium or fine grade sandpaper and gently, like this, in a circular motion, just roll, go all through the canvas like this, and gently take off any roughness that bothers you, okay? That's really important, folks, because if you don't get that off, if you start painting, and say you're hauling your painting around to an art show, and you bump it against something, it may flake off a little piece of that white uh, canvas there and leave a white speck right in the middle of the sky or something. So you want to get off any uh, really uh, tough textured or loose weaves that are giving you a problem. Just lightly, little circular motion. Don't rub hard, don't rub back and forth, just sort of little tight circles like this and just move around. And when you're done with that, you just take your mister bottle, lightly mist it, Take a paper towel and wipe it off, and that'll get the dust off of it. Then this canvas is ready to paint. We use on our palette Hooker's Green. So let me take a little dab of Hooker's Green up here, and there it is. Now, by itself, it's probably okay for some things, but it's really, frankly, a little bit too green for me, a little too whatever. Some people need that color green, but it's almost too much. So what you do to gray green is you add a form of its complement. Well, so another proper thing on the color wheel, what is the complement to green? Red or a form of, because it's not a true green, so you don't have to use a true complement. So let's find a complement down here. We could take a little bit of burnt sienna. That's got red in it. You could go up here now, add a little bit of burnt sienna, and see that kills it from being such a strong green. Now add a little white to that and you'll see, okay, there's the color with the burnt sienna in it. Add a little bit more, maybe you need a little softer green. Green's a hard color to work with anyway, folks. That's why I kind of like to use green as a sample because it's the hardest color to work with. See how it kind of gra grays it? That's the more pure form of the hooker's green. This is the grayer form. Mm -hmm. 